Good, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the very first uh, meeting of the Social Security Committee. As the most senior member of this committee, uh, it is my duty to take the chair at, at the moment. And if we just uh, go to the agenda, well, before we do go to the agenda, could I remind everyone to turn off their mobile phones as it does interfere with uh, the recording equipment here. So I'll give you a couple of minutes if no one's all mobile phones off. That's great. Can we go to agenda item one, which is declaration of interest? And if I could just start off and then we can go around uh, the table. Uh, my name's Sandra White, MSP for Glasgow Kelvin, and I have no relevant interest to declare. Can I just start with you, Mark? My name's Ruth Maguire, MSP um, for Cunningham South constituency, and I have no relevant interest to declare. I'm George Adam, Paisley's MSP, and I have no relevant interest, but a couple of voluntary ones I'd like to make. Uh, I'm the patron of the Scottish Disability Equality Forum and a member of Remshire Access Panel, which may have some dealings with uh, the work we do. Ben McPherson, MSP for Edinburgh Northern and Leith, and I have no relevant interest to declare. Alison Johnston, MSP for Lothian, and I have no relevant interests to declare. Gordon Lindhurst, MSP for Lothian. Um, I have interests which are declarable for the register of interests that, that may not be relevant here, but I'll simply generally declare them. Uh, first of all, I am a, an advocate, a practicing advocate, and member of the Faculty of Advocates. I own heritable property, which is declarable in Edinburgh and West Lothian, as well as there being rental incomes from the, this heritage. And finally, I have a holding of Royal Bank of Scotland shares. The details of these items will be in the register of members' interests. Thank you. Um, Adam Tompkins, um, MSP for Glasgow. Three um, relevant interests. I'm the John Miller Professor of Public Law at the University of Glasgow, and I'm in receipt of um, uh, income there as, a, as an employee of the university. I'm also in receipt of irregular, modest conference fee income, uh, and I am in receipt of royalties for the too many books I've written on constitutional law. Um, I'm Polly McNeil uh, on the Glasgow Regional List, and I have no relevant uh, interest to declare. Mark Griffin, MSP for Central Scotland, and no relevant interest to declare at the committee. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, we're now going to agenda item two, and that is the choosing of a convener. Uh, basically, uh, the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish National Party uh, are eligible for nomination as convener of this committee. Can I therefore ask members of the Scottish National Party to put forward a name for convener? Can I? Yourself, Hi, Sandra. Uh, I've known you for a very long time, so I know this is a role you'll be suited for. So can I nominate Sandra White? Thank you very much. Any objections to the nomination? No. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I just thank you all very much for the, the nomination? Uh, and that's agreed. Thank you very much. We're going to agenda item three, choice of deputy convener. And the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish Labour Party are eligible for nomination as Deputy Convener of the Committee. Can I therefore invite members of the Labour Party to nominate Deputy Convener? Yes, ma'am. Convener, could I add, nominate Pauline McNeill as Deputy Convener of the Committee? Any objections to nomination? Congratulations, Pauline, Pauline McNeill, who I've known for a, a very long time also. Uh, congratulations that uh, you're now Deputy Convener. Look forward to working with yourself. In that respect, thank you. Uh, agenda item four is the next committee meeting. Uh, we have one more meeting before the summer recess, and I thought I would suggest that we perhaps invite a minister to come along uh, to give their views on the social security aspect of their portfolio. Uh, I wonder if members are okay with that particular suggestion? Okay, thank you. Uh, next suggestion would be um, <coughs> looking at round table proposals. Uh, the previous committee, or predecessor committee, uh, started its work with a couple of round table uh, discussions uh, with the uh, stakeholders to get their views on uh, the priorities that they see for this particular committee and the powers that are coming uh, to this parliament. Uh, given that we don't have any immediate business at the moment, uh, perhaps September would be a good time to do a round table discussion. I just wonder if everyone... Pardon? Perhaps when would be a good time? September. September. 
Would that be all right? That agreed? Thank you very much. Uh, the next item in that particular part of the agenda is a business planning day, and uh, we have an option of a planning day late in the recess uh, to plan our longer-term work programme. Uh, I would welcome members' views on that particular aspect of it. And uh, I'll go round the table and take those views. I'll start with yourself. Yeah, but I'm happy to take part in a, um, a planning day. Obviously, it's a new committee coming together. We do have a lot of work ahead of us. And with the new powers coming, I think it would be worthwhile sometime late in recess would definitely suit me. Mm -hmm. Pauline, have you any comments on that or any thoughts on it? Yeah, it would make sense, uh, and also to try and understand the, the mechanics of the remit that we've got, an understanding of exactly when the powers will transfer to the Scottish Parliament, and so we're clear about the mechanics of everything before we decide our work programme, so yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yourself, have you got any ideas on that particular one? Me? Yes, uh, sorry, oh, thank, Mr. Thank, I should thank, have named. Thank you, thank you, Convener. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on your um, election to the convenership of this committee and to congratulate Pauline Neal on her election to the Deputy Convenership. I look forward to working with um, everybody here, and I hope we're not always going to sit in party groups um, ar ar around the table. I think uh, co committees work much better when the arrangement is not, uh, is not, is not like that. Um, Convener, I would like to draw one matter to the attention uh, of the committee today. Um, um, uh, the Fiscal Framework Agreement, um, which was agreed between the two governments in February, states that the implementation dates for welfare will be agreed by the Joint Ministerial Working Group on Welfare. The Joint Ministerial Working Group is part of the UK's architecture of intergovernmental uh, machinery. And there is um, a written agreement um, on parliamentary oversight of intergovernmental relations agreed between the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament near the end of the last session and published um, in the Devolution and Further Powers Committee report that was, uh, that was published in March of this year. And I'd like to say that I very much welcome that agreement and commend the Scottish Government for having entered into it. I think it's going to be a very important agreement that will improve uh, the ability of committees such as this and indeed the Scottish Parliament generally to hold um, ministers to hold Scottish ministers and indeed UK ministers effectively to account for the intergovernmental operations uh, that they engage in. Now, under paragraph 11 of the agreement, the Scottish Government has agreed to provide to the relevant committee of the Scottish Parliament advance written notice uh, prior to scheduled relevant meetings, that's to say relevant mm -hmm. intergovernmental meetings. And this will enable the relevant committee to express a view on the topic in advance of the intergovernmental meeting. And under paragraph 12 of the agreement, the Scottish Government agrees to provide the relevant committee of the Scottish Parliament with a written summary of the issues discussed, ideally, it says, within two weeks. Now, convener, I would suggest that we are the relevant committee uh, when it comes to meetings of the Joint Ministerial Working Group on Welfare. And I understand that the Joint Ministerial Working Group on Welfare is meeting today in Glasgow. Um, may I therefore ask first whether the Scottish Government have given any indication to you as convener uh, or indeed to the clerks to this committee that this meeting was to take place? Th thank, thank you very much. Uh, your suggestion I think we all certainly take on board. I, I knew about uh, the meeting today, uh, but certainly was not officially told. Right. Uh, but been good if we were able to go along, but obviously we're, we're just starting this committee, yeah, so we indeed. couldn't, uh, basically. But thank you for, for raising that particular point. I've got two questions, to, two further issues sorry, then excuse excuse ar 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 arising out of that, convenient, if yeah, I may. Sorry, uh, can I just, sorry, can I just stop you? Uh, I, I do have a letter, you know, from um, Stephen Crabb, MP, which was sent to me as convener, which I will read out at the end of yeah, the meeting uh, to answer Excellent. some yeah. of your questions there. Indeed. But basically, this is just talking about you know, the forward business, uh, and I'm sure that uh, we can answer any of your questions or take yeah. these questions on board at the next meeting. And I'm no, sure ab issues that you've already raised uh, when we get a relevant minister here yeah. will be able to answer these questions well, for us. But could, could I pass it around the committee for well, them Well, could I just to, finish the point? Yeah, could I just, could I just, could no, I just finish is, the point? Is it a point you're making about the forward business or questions that you're going to ask? It's about, it's, it relates directly to the operation of the Joint Ministerial Working Group on Welfare, which is meeting today, and which I think this committee should take formal notice of the fact well, that Well, I think, I think we have already taken formal notice that the committee is meeting. Well, uh, we don't know exactly what's happening at the moment with the committee. Similar to we have just started this yeah. committee just now. So, so, so uh, Pauline, did you want to come in on that particular point? I mean, just uh, I think presumably, Adam, you're raising this now because we're about going to recess quite soon, and I mm -hmm. think we need to be clear. 
before their work plan that we're in possession of all the relevant information. So perhaps maybe you as convener could make sure that the committee get the mm -hmm. report as soon as possible on that matter, Mr Adam. Yeah, that's, well, I was going to say, obviously, as convener, it's my job to chair the, the, the committee in the yeah. meeting, and I'd like to make sure that the committee members get the full say. And afterwards, I was going to you know, mop up, as you might want to say, and certainly that would be one of the suggestions we would be meeting, uh, to basically ask for any relevant minutes to be sent to this committee. So I, I think that's well, basically, basically that, that was what I was going to say when we summed up. I'd like to yeah. give the committee members their opportunity to come in. So Mr Linter, so do you want to come in on any of the aspects that was raised in, for the future business? Well, uh, may I add my congratulations to yourself you. and the deputy convener. Um, as far as having holding a meeting for forward planning of business, I certainly think that is uh, obviously a very useful and essential um, thing to do. As for timing, I think that's for the clerks to liaise with the members of the committee because some people may have commitments even in recess which uh, will have to be worked around but I've nothing in principle against having a meeting towards the end of the recess period or perhaps it may have to be depending on commitments mm -hmm. early September. Uh, I would associate myself with the comments just made by Adam Tompkins and the Deputy Convener that uh, we, we do need to know clearly what the relationship between this committee is and the uh, ministerial uh, d discussions that are ongoing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison. Did you yeah, want to um, Congratulations to, to the Convener and Vice Convener. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that intergovernmental relations, good intergovernmental relations mm -hmm. are going to be absolutely key to optimising our ability to scrutinise mm -hmm. um, properly and to sort of maximise the work that this committee can do. I mean, yes, we're having more powers devolved, but I think in order to deliver them properly, we're going to have to work closely um, and better together. And, you know, organisations like the Joseph Roundtree Foundation raised that in the, the last Scotland yeah, Bill true. Committee. So I think we're sort of waiting for other information coming forward which will enable us to best set out a work programme but I do think it would be helpful for the committee to meet and have a discussion about how we can be most effective. Yeah, absolutely. Ben? Congratulations as, as well you. Chair from myself and, and Vice Chair, um, convener rather. Uh, I fully associate myself with the, the, the priority to have a forward planning meeting and, and to consider the business and how effectively we go forward with this new committee and with the, the challenge of implementing these new powers effectively. Uh, George, uh, yes, congratulations to you and uh, your deputy convener as well. Uh, I think uh, we're a long way from Remshire Council, Sandra, <laughs> both of us. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's... Uh, I'm quite happy to, as a full-time MSP, I'm quite flexible when it comes to actually being uh, for the away day meeting to make sure we can get this, because I think it's important that we make this time so that we can actually get this work done and get our work planned. Some of this could have been Mr Tompkins' uh, ideas, could have been brought up during the away day as well, but I'm quite happy for to leave it in the hands of the convener and your deputy to possibly uh, make sure we get this all sorted out between now and the recess and our away day as well. Thank you, George. Yeah. Uh, can we now formally congratulate you oh, as well you. and, and deputy. look forward to working with you both. Um, absolutely, a forward planning meeting where we can have good, frank discussions and decide how we're going to best move forward would be um, ideal. And as a, also a full-time MSP, I'm available um, in recess. Um, thank you very much. I mean, very interesting <coughs> first conversation and, and the ideas that came up. Uh, I just wondered, obviously... The next meeting we would have would probably be the 30th of June, I would imagine. And uh, coming from the suggestions from you know, the committee members, uh, depending on whether we get a cab sec or a minister, we could also raise the issue of uh, the meeting that's taken place, if that would be yes. advisable. And we could manage to get a cab sec that could give us information what happened at that meeting. So that would be 10 days away. So, Adam, uh, Mr. Tompkins. <laughs> Two weeks away, um, yes. I think, wouldn't it? Um, so uh, I wonder then if I may uh, ask uh, Cabinet Sec uh, ask Convener if the committee thinks um, that you might uh, write formally to the Cabinet Secretary uh, for Community Social Security and Equalities today to ask her to supply this committee with a written summary of today's meeting of the Joint Ministerial Working Group uh, on Welfare in time for us to be able to consider 
uh, that at our uh, next meeting, which would be in a fortnight's time. Um, uh, that, that arrangement would be perfectly in accordance with what the Scottish Government has voluntarily and I think very um, prudently agreed to do in paragraph 12 of the written agreement on parliamentary oversight of intergovernmental relations, which I referred to uh, a, a few moments ago. It would be very helpful, I think, for this committee uh, to have um, at the time that we are um, uh, speaking with um, whatever minister the Scottish Government chooses to send to us in two weeks' time, assuming that any minister is available, um, a note um, of what uh, ministers are discussing with their UK counterparts today uh, in advance of us being able to talk with uh, Scottish ministers about, the, about, the, uh, um, about the, uh, the state of play, if I can uh, put it in those terms, um, um, uh, in the uh, joint ministerial working group. Would that be a sensible suggestion? I don't, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, um, yeah, I think I think we're open to just that. Just say, if Mr. Tomkin had said that right from the start, we could have saved ourselves about ten minutes. <laughs> uh, I think that's a perfectly reasonable request. Yep. I mean, I don't have a problem with that at all, and we will, we will with the clerks and myself, and, uh, to to pen a letter to that to that effect. Uh, I did mention before, Mr. Tomkins, when you raised that particular issue in regards to the Department of Work and Pensions, and uh, I did receive a letter which. If, uh, I'll read out, if, I, if, if you don't mind. Uh, it came through just at, uh, the other day there, uh, basically mentioning a congratulations on your appointment, and it mentions my colleague, Pity Patel, Minister for Employment, met with the Welfare Reform Committee informally last October and made a commitment to return following the elections. We both want the Department for Work and Pensions to continue to build on the engagement that has been taking place with the Scottish Parliament and for this engagement to continue going forward. I look forward to meeting with the committee in due course to discuss the delivery of the new welfare powers and obtain members' views on how the UK and Scottish governments can better work together. I have also asked my officials to be on hand to offer factual briefing that you and new committee members may find helpful about the current welfare system. So we also have a pledge, I would say, uh, from uh, Stephen Crabb uh, to come either himself or... Uh, Pity Patel to this committee, and I would look forward to be able to raise some issues with them also. So I think uh, if there's no further comments or questions on that, I would say positive note. Oh, I, I, I would just, again just hope that on behalf of the committee you'll be able to write back to Mr. Crabb to thank him for his um, letter and to appreciate the fact that he's um, volunteering to come uh, or to send his ministerial team to come uh, and speak with us, and we look forward to that happening early in the autumn. Yeah, I think I think this is actually a commitment that was made at the Welfare Reform Committee, yeah. uh, basically that he would attend the meetings. So certainly, a letter will go back thanking him very much. Great, with thank you very much. letter that he sent. So I think if there's no further issues to be raised on that positive note, I would say I would uh, formally close the meeting. <laughs>